race for who takes over from Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki is heating up. As the who is who in Edo State politics are throwing their hats in the ring on various political platforms. Ahead of next month's party primaries, over 30 aspirants are already jostling for the governorship tickets of the ruling People's Democratic Party, PDP, All Progressives Congress, APC, and Labour Party in Edo State. One of the aspirants I'll be looking to secure the ticket to run on the platform of the Labour Party is Segios Ogun, a two-time House of Representatives member who represented Essan Northeast, Essan Southeast constituency, is seen as one of the few who can win election for the Labour Party, if paired with popular running mate from Edo South. He has said his mission is to create a thriving and prosperous state where citizens have equal opportunities to achieve their full potential, and that he is committed to promoting good governance, transparency, and accountability in all sectors of the state. Joining us on the morning show to discuss his chances to secure the governorship ticket in the Labour Party and his plans for the state if he eventually goes all the way to succeed Governor Baseki is Honorable Sergios Ogo, Labour Party governorship aspirant in Edo State. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Honorable Sergio Zogun. Well, what do you think of the politics of zoning that is at the center of all the conversations in Edo State in this round of uh, gubernatorial elections? We have had people say, oh, it must be Edo North. Some people say, oh, it must be Edo Central. Some people say, okay, even in the introduction by Ayo, she said, ah, it looks like you will stand a strong chance if you have somebody from Edo South attached to you. So what's your take on the zoning politics in your state? How well, the, for now, I, I don't know if you are aware. Well, Dr. Abati, it's good to have you back. I watched you. you in Davos with your heart and everything. I was feeling sorry for you. I wish you could smuggle some pepper soup to you while you were there. <laughs> I... I, <laughs> I did, when I was coming into the National Assembly in 2015, we had, um, there's a history in my constituency that people would do two terms. But in 2013, we started getting feelers that um, those that were in the National Assembly then wanted to do a third term. So we fought and um, we succeeded in, in destabilizing that. And uh, so I, went, I came to the National Assembly, I did two terms. So when people were urging me to do a third term, I said, no, I could not have fought those that wanted to do third term and uh, now want to do a third term. So I declined to, to do third term because I believe in zoning. That's the point I'm trying to make. So we were rotating from, I represented two local governments. So I represented my local government and I felt it should go to the other local government. So I believe in it because that gives a, uh, well, maybe the necessary spread, but you will not say you sacrifice uh, quality on the altar of zoning. S I supported Peter Obi very early, June 2022, when they started uh, trying to maneuver uh, the ticket in PDP and he moved over to Labour Party. And one of the reasons I supported Peter Obi then was his brights enough to be the president of Nigeria. That he's from the Southeast should not take him out of the race. So, and I spoke up then, clearly, despite being a serving member of the National Assembly in a different platform, uh, platform entirely. I spoke up, I supported him, and today I have no regrets. I wonder if I have come to join him in Labour Party. So, uh, zoning is good because it gives everyone a sense of belonging. The same reason some of us said we we're not going to support Article in, in 2022 when the PDP went that way. So I, I, it's a good thing. And um, I know many people are saying no manner of things about it right now. I know the next question might be, oh, well, the issue of 62% in Edo South, 25% in um, Edo North, and maybe 13% in Central. Well, I don't know what I want to get into that argument. Really, because right. it negates even the very idea of democracy. All right. Well, in, in some instances it works in, in terms of zoning. I, I, sometimes it comes up when it favors the candidate in, in question, because usually at the national level we often talk about zoning and fair representation 
of all the people involved. But let me ask you about your thoughts on um, the, well, you, because you mentioned Mr. Peter Obi, and we had Mr. Akpata here with us, and he also mentioned Mr. Peter Obi. It looks like you're both uh, looking and hoping to have the support of Mr. Peter Obi to have some kind of foothold at this election, at the primaries. Do you know if, his, if you have his support? Have you, had, have you met with him because you want to leverage his popularity in Edo State? Uh, Ayo, like I said, and not many uh, of the aspirants in the do today spoke up June 2022. When I, even as a serving House of Rep member on the platform of PDP, said I will, I endorse Peter Obi and said I will support him. Have you met him? Have you not many. Your plans? You can go back and check. Have you met him? Have you discussed Yes, your I plans met him. We 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 sure, sure, I have. I have. I've met him, I've discussed with him. You. you know, we were, we were, we were, if I discuss what? Is he backing you? Is he in support of your candidature? <laughs> I, uh, if he, Peter Obi is backing me, I will come on a rise and say he's backing me or he's endorsing me. We don't do that in It'll politics, you should know that. You. But as he's the leader of the party, he's the leader of the party and um, he's supporting everybody for now, I think. So let's leave that uh, for now. Okay, so Honorable Ogun, uh, good to see you again. You're in the race, you know, for the Labour Party. Good morning. But what is this talk about you being the joker that the current governor wants to use, you know, in the Labour Party? <laughs> There's this talk, and this talk has been rife, you know, and that it is you they want to use to sort of be like a placeholder so that nobody will be able to challenge a governor's candidate. What do you say about that talk? No, you laugh. Uh, Rufai, you I laughing? think you know You're a little laughing. about me. You know, <laughs> it can't be, that can't be correct, Rufai. No, but I'm hearing, talk. The, I'm hearing that for the first time from you. It's politics. No, 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 Rufai, it's not correct. You say you're part of the joke no, of no, the no, calculation. No, no, it's not correct. I, I'm hearing that. Is there anything we need to know? You're not no, telling no. us. I, <laughs> but Rufa, I don't know that you know my antecedent in the National Assembly. You will know that I'm not the kind of person that anybody would do that with. Matter of fact, I had discussed with the governor when I finished in National Assembly. I went with I went to show him my my all I did in National Assembly. I wrote to him officially. He flipped through it and said, impressive. And said to me, Do you want to run? Are you interested in the governorship? I said, Yes, I am. He said, okay, well, he cannot endorse me, but that uh, that would be unfair to others. And that was it. I think like uh, about two months later, I went to see him again. And uh, he asked if why I was not attending the meeting in my senatorial. And I said, I didn't believe what they were doing then. You know, then I was seeing PDP. And I told him that he told me how he was working to rebuild the PDP and all. And after everything, he wanted to know my thoughts. And I said to him, I am changing platform. And well, he said to me, no, you will spend too much money if you go there and all that. Cut a long story short, that was my, the last time I spoke with the governor. So to answer your question, I'm not the kind of person that anybody can use like that. So is that where you, I, is that where you are going I'm to the Labour, Labour Party. Party? Is that where you are going to the Labour Party? I mentioned to him, well, he's, he's a politician. He would know I declared for the Labour Party, and it was not something I did behind the house. You know, I declared and I had my leaders there, and it was, on, was in the news and all. So he knows I'm in the Labour Party. I, he knew I was, I mentioned it to him. Like I said, he tried to discourage me. You know. Well, Honorable Ogun. <laughs> well, I've not been seeing your campaign uh, adverts. I've not been, I've been seeing, you know, materials from other aspirants on the platform of the Labour Party. And I would like you to just address two issues quickly. How do you rate yourself against, say, for example, Ulumide Akpata, uh, who is also uh, an aspirant on the platform of the Labour Party. And then there is Kenneth Masuagon, who is also an aspirant on the uh, platform of the Labour Party, as you all prepare for the uh, party primaries this month. We're now in February. And then if you could just go immediately from that to tell us what is that special thing that you think is missing in Osadibe House and in the governance of Edo State 
that you want to add as value? Thank you, Dr. Abati. I, I am pro-people, and that's why I believe I'm in the right party today. Uh, in the National Assembly, I had 60, 63 bills, 61 motions, 99 projects that I initiated. Then I added money just by virtue of representing the constituency, the ongoing projects that I met, about six major ones. I wrote the monies were put in the budget for the execution of those projects. So the projects will be totally about 105. So projects, bills, motion, were all pro people. I believe in working from the base. I fought for the common people in the house. I don't know how, if you are familiar with some of my bills, some of them I discussed here. I brought the bills about how that the children of uh, public servants should not go school abroad because we ought to give attention to schools here. Also had a bill to say that uh, public servants should not go overseas for medical treatment. You know, we ought to fix our health institutions here. Uh, I also brought a bill to amend the Constitution, Chapter 2, Fundamental Objectives and Directive Principles of uh, State Policy. But Dr. Abati, you are very familiar with that. Uh, sections 11 to 23 of, of, uh, of that, of, that um, of the Chapter 2 clearly, clearly speaks to the issues of uh, the poor people in this country. But my amendment was that Section 6, Sub 6C, that you know, sought to ask the jurisdiction of the court should be amended. Because if what the, 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 that chapter is saying basically is the government should strive to provide welfare for the people, education, health, clean sanitation, I mean clean water and sanitation, which if you go to SDG, the 17 SDG goals, one to six basically speaks to. So I felt we should amend that section it shouldn't just say they should strive to do that. It should be obligatory. These were basically speaking to the needs of the poor people. So I am one that believes that it should build for the base. I have built from the base. I have said I will give full autonomy to the local government, not deducting a dime from their money. If anything, give them more money so that they can begin to take care of people at that level. We know the local government used to build roads. They should build access roads so that farm produce can come out. I want to have cottage industry in the rural areas. In the first case, anyway, I am a farmer. I know you can process Gary. I have a plant that was produced, fabricated in end camp in Ilori. Can produce, I mean, it can, it can peel cassava, wash it, mill it, and then fry it. So we don't have to subject our women going through frying of gari by fire and all that. So if you can do this is locally around the farm and people just come to the farm gate to pick up the bags, you create prosperity in the rural areas. I have done this. I have built, when I was in the house, I built primary health care centers. I built primary schools. I built secondary schools. So I know this is practicable. If you take care of these people, where nobody wants to be called poor. But if you take care of this, the masses, let me use that word, the vulnerable ones, most of the problem plaguing this country today will be taken care of. We don't have to wait for a Boko Haram to appear or militants to read their heads yeah, before we start Ogun, talking about amnesty for them. Ogun, I wanted, I yes. wanted you to link, link all of this to your chances and how you stand against persons like Kenneth Masuagbo, and Olumide Apata, who want the same thing that you want on the same platform, through the same platform? Dr. Abati, I have won two primaries and two major elections. The people you have mentioned have not won any. And, well, I don't know. I, I, I will win the election. I will win the, I will win the nomination and I will go ahead to win the election. 
Yeah, because I have friends across the parties. It's not so much of who can put money on the table today. We are not talking about that. We are talking about one that can walk across party lines to deliver the votes. One that knows how to defend the votes when the votes are put out there. If you rely on Labour Party alone, you will not win the elections. I can walk across party lines. I have friends and colleagues in the major parties. I have supporters in APC and in PDP that would vote for me. So I am the one that will win the election for Labour Party. Right. You don't jump to the platform because you think it's, it's, creditable, it's credible today. But I have been there. I have seen it all. All right. Thank you so much, Honorable. Just, just very quickly, since you said in the last few years you've been in the House, and I know you talked about um, recently running um, a farm business, but what has come out is the amount of money for the nomination form that has a governorship nomination, nomination form by the Labour Party currently set at 30 million naira, even though there are conversations to hopefully reduce that. And so people will be wondering that as a lawmaker and then a farmer, I don't know how big your farm is, would you be willing in the spirit of transparency and people, being people-centric to, you know, for an open declaration of your finances, how you can afford to pay for that based on the salaries of a lawmaker and, um, and proceeds from your business, would that be something you'd be willing to pursue? Yes, I, uh, we, we, we met the state working committee. They invited us to say we should prune down the number of aspirants from my senatorial. So they use the opportunity, somebody asks the question, why is it so expensive, the forms, the nomination forms and expression of interest forms? Um, they explain that, look, they are not like the big parties you know, that have access to state funds and that um, they think is okay. And I think that settled it. Well, like I said, I'm a farmer. And well, before I came into, went to the house, I'm no longer in the house anyway. Before I went to the house, I was the CEO of an oil service company. You know. I, I, I'm a businessman. Yeah, I have, I've had my farms on the side. So, but election is not funded by an individual alone. And I do not believe that one should go around begging people, the big boys, to start dropping billions. Because when they do that, they will come back for their money when you win. So when we keep blaming leadership in this country, the problem is not leadership. It's the selection and how they emerge. When you take too much from people, you will pay back. But when you get the generality of the people to contribute to your elections, it will become cheap. When you get there from day one, you will work for the people. That's how I won my elections, go into the National Assembly. I didn't have a godfather, but God in heaven is my father. So because I wasn't owing people, I hit the ground running from day one, and I worked for the people. So same thing I would do here. People will pay for my form. People will be giving to my campaign. And so, that is so how I'm going to run this election. So I'm not going to seek one God further. You're going to run this election through crowdfunding yeah, sure. for the people. Okay. 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 Real quickly. Basically. Un basically. Un that, 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 that's how I've been. Honorable yeah. Sergius. Real quickly. Uh, what are you going to do to tackle the increasing kidnap cases at Uboha, where you are from? This question is a specific question from somebody you grew up together, Nelson, is saying hi to you, and that's the question for you from Nelson. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Rufai. You see, Christmas season, people couldn't even go home to Oboha because kidnappers were on that road. And that's what we are saying. If you create a thriving industry in the rural areas, you will not have this huge migration. We all grew up in the village. I mean, we grew up, I mean, well, yeah, we grew up in the village. Allow the local economy to thrive. The state is supposed to give 10% of the internally generated revenue, IGRO, to the local government. Local governments don't tie, don't tie roads anymore. They don't clear drainages. So allow the local government to get their money. Do you think if my local government, East and Southeast local government, the council chairman gets half a billion, and I, as a governor of a do state, I will task him on how to spend that money. You will show me your project, your program, and I will task you, I will see results before you come back for your money the next month. They will flush those kidnappers. There will be nobody in the forest. They will encourage the police, the uh, civil defense, even the vigilantes. They will even have informants among the youth. The local government chairman know the bad boys and the good boys. That will not happen. Under my watch, there will be no kidnappers. 
because it empower the local councils. All this will disappear. Stop deducting their monies. Local government chairmen are just there. They even go to their offices maybe once in a month when the money comes. But tell me if a local council chairman gets half a billion every month, and we as a governor, as a government, we will support them where they have comparative advantage over other council. When they do this, when their activities, their awardee contracts, handling procurement, would they be sitting there in Benin or elsewhere? They will be in the council office supervising and running things from there. So that would be, kidnapping would be a thing of the past under me. I can tell you that for free. Just okay. boost the local economy, all this will disappear. I can tell you that. Okay. Well, I mean, one of the things we learned this morning is one of the ways to also deal with this is to just buy guns for everybody. So we all become kidnappers, and nobody can kidnap anybody. <laughs> That's one solution. You know, it's a proposal.